Hi folks, in this video I am going to show you how to log into Google Apps with WSO2 Identity Server. There are multiple options you can log into Google Apps. Uh, one is you can sync your on-prem user store with Google Apps. In that case you basically duplicate all your users credentials, all your employees credentials in uh, Google Cloud. The other option is you can enable single sign-on between your own identity provider deployed behind your firewall with Google Apps. So that's the that's the best approach because you have the control over uh, your own employees credentials. In this particular demo you can deploy identity server over your existing user store which can be an LDAP, database or an active directory and then go to Google Apps and add identity server as a trusted identity provider. So this is what I am going to show you in this short demo. If you hear about WSO2 Identity Server for the first time, it's an open source identity and access management product released under the most business friendly Apache 2 open source license. You can go to wso2.com and go to products, identity and access management and download the latest version. Uh, by the time of this recording, the latest version is 530 that is what I'm going to use in my demo and to get started with identity server you only need to have JDK 1.8 plus and then uh, have the Java home set up properly in your environment. Let's get started by configuring uh, Google Apps. You need to log into your Google Apps domain as an admin and then add identity server as a trusted IDP there. Let's go to admin.google.com Okay, I'm already logged in there. Then click on security, single sign-on settings and Enable setup SSO with third party identity provider, and you need to fill these three uh, input boxes. Sign in URL is the SAML SSO endpoint of identity server for SSO, and the other one is for single logout. Identity server supports both SAML SSO and SAML single logout. So, this is the endpoint. You can put your uh, own host name and port number, and this is the context related to SAML SSO so it should be as it is okay then we need to upload the public certificate of the identity server whenever identity server issues a SAML response the assertion is signed by its private key and we need to tell Google we need to share with Google the public certificate of identity server so it knows how to verify the signature so let's see how we can export the public certificate of identity server Okay, this is identity server home. You need to go to repository, resources, security. Let me show you. Okay, this is the this is the uh, identity server home. Now let's go into repository, resources, security. Here you can find wso2carbon.jk file. This is the Java key store where we store all the uh, certificates used by identity server by default okay so we can use key tool command uh, uh, tool which comes with the java itself to export the public certificate of the identity server you can use this command key tool export and let's give the file uh, so the exported certificate will will get stored get, get stored in this particular file and then the key store name Okay, alias that is WSO2 carbon all these are default configurations you don't need to do any any changes and you can change all these names too right uh, now uh, done let's click enter so it asks for the uh, password password is once again WSO2 carbon so this is the password WSO2 carbon okay press enter now you can see file is stored uh, the certificate is stored in the file is.cert. Let's move this to desktop. 
okay done now let's upload that certificate okay done upload and check this one unfortunately google doesn't support creating a, a trusted idp using saml metadata file if it uh, does support that we can just get the uh, saml metadata file from the admin server and upload it here uh, if you recall while while we were doing the demo related to salesforce we created the identity provider in salesforce using the saml metadata xml file we got from the identity server all done let's click save here okay that's all you need to do at the google lab site now let's start the identity server okay you need to go to is home bin directory and then start with wso2serve.sh it will take around 40 to 50 seconds to uh, start and by default identity server runs on the https port 9443 if you need to change the default ports you can do it by changing the offset value defined in repository conf carbon xml still not started uh, okay now it started let's go to the browser and identity server is running on localhost it should be on https localhost 9443 by default it comes with an embedded LDAP that is its uh, user store you can uh, configure it uh, to talk to an LDAP any LDAP server active directory or a database in a production deployment let me log in with the default credentials admin admin and here if you look at the list of users I have these users in that in server coming from the underneath LDAP. Okay. Now to represent Google Apps as a trusted service provider in IS, I need to go to service providers and click add. And let's give the name Google Apps. Okay. You can give any name there. Register. Then the most important configuration element here is inbound authentication configuration. From identity server side, the authentication request generated by the Google Apps is an inbound authentication request. It can be a SAML request, OpenID Connect request, uh, CAS request, WS Federation request, or even a proprietary protocol. In this particular case, since Google Apps uses SAML, I need to configure SAML to web based So let's go there. If, if Google Apps supports exporting the service product configuration into a metadata XML file, we can easily do it by uploading that file here. But since it doesn't support it, we need to uh, populate this uh, form by hand. Issuer is the issuer of the SAML request. Both the SAML request and SAML response has an element called issuer. right? So for the SAML response, the issuer is the identity server. For the SAML request, issuer is the Google Apps. So this is your issuer, right? It starts with google.com slash a slash your Google Apps domain name. So in my case, it's facilelogin.com. We put it here. Assertion consumer URL is the endpoint where identity server has to send back the SAML response. So this should be a URL from the Google Apps itself. So it will look like this, right? It will look like google.com, www.google.com slash a slash facilelogin.com slash ACS. 
Only thing you need to change is this part. You need to put your Google Apps domain name. Okay. Just copy it. It must be your HTTPS since we are using some LBR here. If you just send it over HTTP, somebody can steal the token and uh, use it. Right. So make sure it's this is on HTTPS. Click on Add. Here you can see we have the option of having multiple assertion consumer URLs. The reason is in the request also you send where you need to send a summer response to. Right. So you you will see that in the summer request. And identity server will do a check here to see whether. What is in the summer, re summer request is uh, listed out here. So you can send any URL there in a summer request, which will be part of uh, the assertion consumer URLs you define here. Okay. So you can stick to the default signing algorithm, uh, response signing algorithm, and response digest algorithm. And the certificate alias you can pick, like uh, which certificate, which private key uh, that you are going to use. So in this case, I just pick uh, WSU carbon. That's it. Uh, that's mostly it. And uh, Google Apps using uh, SP initiated SAML. Just register. And then again, we need to pick here which attribute we need to send as a subject element in the SAML response. So here I set it to email address. So email address of the logged in user will be added to the summer response as the subject. That's all I need to do. Okay, now let's see how this works. If I go to mail.google.com slash a slash login.com this will take me to the identity server and now I should be able to log in it. Prabhat and the password. So this username and credentials, they come from the underneath user store of the identity server. Okay, done. Now you can see I am on my mail account. So this is very straightforward and uh, this concludes our demo today. If you have any questions, uh, please uh, Ask them in the comment section below and in next video we are going to uh, do it on OO2O using curl uh, to understand OO2O. Thank you very much.